I do read news that、uh, from time to time, local people in Okinawa will protest against the U.S. military bases in Okinawa.、Uh, quite often, actually, there are always some protests, right? Their sign said, "Our anger has reached its limit." Marines out, and they made sure nothing was lost in translation. We have been enduring cruel treatment for seventy years. And、uh, this story, this story also being confirmed by my other guest, another guest who joined me in another discussion about the whole issue about Taiwan Island. His name is Brian Belletic. Maybe you know him. He、uh, he's a he's a geopolitical analyst in in Thailand now, but he used to serve in the U.S. Marine Corps in his younger age, and he was sent to Okinawa. So he he's now really against this、uh, U.S. aggressions globally, and especially the meddling in Southeast Asia, entire Indo-Pacific region. And I remember he told me that when he first arrived in Okinawa. When he was young, he thought, "I'm going abroad as a U.S. soldier to、uh, promote peace and to protect the local people in Okinawa." And then he, when he landed in Okinawa, and he was surprised, he was shocked that local people were protesting. And they're like, "Why? We are here to protect you. Why you hate us?" And then after a few years serving in in that, that military base, he saw how horrible the attitudes the U.S. soldier have towards the local people, especially the senior ones. And sometimes they committed really horrifying crimes towards the local people. And he realized, well, okay, the, apparently U.S. Army is not doing anything good globally. I think no one knows this better than you, as a as a local people there. So can you tell us what really happened? In Okinawa. Yeah, yeah. So、um, we are trying to promote local Luchuan or Okinawan voices because so often it's the Americans, right, the Westerners and the Japanese voices who are speaking for and over the voices of Luchuans or Okinawans, right? And so their perspective is very different from the native perspective, in, in, you know, a lot of the times. So.、Um, Yeah, so Luchuans have been protesting the U.S. and Japan military occupation of our islands every day, every single day,、uh, for generations. This is <laughs> this has been going on on a daily basis. So it's not、mm-hmm. it's not from time to time. It's daily.、Um, some some there are many different locations、um, in the Luchu Islands where daily protests have been occurring. For decades, decades, and so、um, uh, you know, Japan invaded Luchu in 1879. Prior to that, Luchu was a wealthy and successful independent country. Okay, so Japan invaded in 1879,、uh, did horrible things to the Luchuan people,、um, including a genocide in 1945, where one third of the Okinawan population. Was murdered in just three months. You know, just killed in three months. One third. Again, it's a huge number, huge, huge percentage、wow. of our population killed. Most people don't even know this, right?、Uh, and then 1945, the the U.S. took over, and for, so from 1945 until 1972, Luchuans lived under direct U.S. military rule. And then in 1972, the the United States gave、uh, Luchu to Japan, and since 1972, Luchuans have lived under joint U.S. and Japanese occupation. So, uh, uh, like you said,、um, the, the U.S. and Japan they cause so much harm to Luchuans on a daily basis in. Um, just numerous ways. You mentioned the crimes committed by U.S. soldiers.、Uh, yes, of course, that's a, a very major concern.、Um, Luchuans ha- have suffered from uh, U.S. Uh, soldiers committing violent crimes against women, children, the elderly,、uh, and violent crimes. We're talking about rape, murder, you know,、uh, assault, things like that. And there have been cases. Where Luchuan men have tried to protect the women and children from these soldiers, 
And so what do the U.S. soldiers do? They just shoot the men, too. You know, they just kill the men. Remember, U.S. soldiers have guns, okay? We don't. <laughs> We're completely unarmed. But it's not just crime. Um, it's also environmental damage, uh, harm to our land and sea. Um, it's, um, it's economic deprivation, okay? Uh, the military bases in Okinawa uh, take up around 15% of Okinawa's land and around 30% of the arable or best lands, yet they contribute only around 5% to the local Okinawan economy. So it's running at a huge deficit. It's a tremendous economic burden on the Okinawan people. So um, a, lot of Amer a lot of people in general don't realize this. Americans, they think very highly of themselves and they, they assume that um, Okinawans benefit economically from the military bases. This is not true at all. Uh, so economic deprivation, that is a major human rights violation. Um, and it's also an indicator of genocide, according to the United Nations. So, uh, you know, if you suppress our economy, then we won't be able to rise up and restore our independence, our, our right to self-determination. So everything from crime to uh, pollution, um, environmental damage, economic uh, deprivation, uh, not to mention the space, right? Uh, Luchuans, Luchuans don't want to live near military bases. Who, who wants to live near a military base? Right. A lot of times these bases, they're, they're not located off to the side, usually. A lot of times they're in the middle of major cities, such as Futenma Air Base. It's located in the heart of the densely populated city of Jinon or Ginoan. And I'm sure that local peoples cannot even cross those streets that are in your own city, right? Right, right. Of course, of course, we can't. They'll never let us onto the military base unless, of course, uh, we get a job working for them. Right. Uh, in that case, that's different. But normal, uh, just civilians can't get on the base. And so uh, just can you imagine whatever city uh, your viewers or anyone watching this, whatever city or town you live in, can you just imagine for a moment a, a huge foreign military base in the middle of your city or town not off to the side but right in the middle of downtown can you imagine that uh, mm -hmm. uh and can you imagine all the problems that would cause on a daily basis i mean it's just astounding they don't want it so that's why they put their military bases in other parts of the world in other countries Actually, I have a video that with Rob already explained the history uh, of Okinawa and the connections between uh, China and Luchu. So I'm going to put this video. It's, a, it's about uh, like seven minutes long. So take a look. Since time immemorial, Okinawa was an independent nation known as Luchu with its own unique culture, history, languages, values, and identity. Luchu maintained close, friendly relations with China, Korea, and Southeast Asia. Luchu prospered as a center of international trade, finance, and cross-cultural exchange, and was the chief facilitator of a large and highly influential maritime trade network that stretched throughout Asia. Luchu was highly respected by other peoples around the world, including Westerners, who marveled at how a small nation such as Luchu was able to build a prosperous society where poverty was virtually non-existent. During the 19th century, Luchu became recognized by the international community as an independent country via the signing of treaties with the United States, France, and the Netherlands. In 1879, Japan used its new modern Western-style military to invade and illegally annex Luchu. This would be the first of Japan's many imperialist conquests through World War II. As Japan began to lose the war, it deliberately placed an inordinate amount of military presence onto Okinawa Island with the intent of sacrificing Okinawans 
in order to protect the Japanese homeland. This resulted in the Battle of Okinawa in 1945, in which roughly one third of the indigenous Okinawan population was killed during a time span of just around three months. Japanese soldiers used the battle as a cover-up in order to deliberately murder Okinawan civilians, particularly those they caught speaking the native Okinawan language, as well as Luchu independence leaders. Japanese soldiers also used Okinawans as human shields and forcibly conscripted Okinawan civilians into the battlefield, including women and children. After the war, most of Japan's other colonies regained their independence, but not Luchu. Instead, the United States decided to keep Luchu for itself to use for military bases. The United States military forcefully relocated thousands of Luchuans from their ancestral homes and imprisoned those who resisted in order to build these military bases. The United States also released convicted Japanese Class A war criminals such as Nobusuke Kishi because they believed he would lead Japan in a pro-America direction, which is exactly what he did he would go on to become prime minister. Kishi's grandson, Shinzo Abe, continues the fascist legacy of his grandfather. He and numerous other Japanese politicians are continuously pushing Japan further into a right-wing, neoconservative, imperialist, and fascist direction. Not only are they trying to revive Japan's military strength, but they are also rewriting history, including Japan's textbooks, in order to cover up Japan's war crimes. For this reason, many of the younger generations in Japan today are completely unaware of Japan's dark past as an imperialist aggressor and are under the belief that Japan did nothing wrong. This is a grave concern for many Okinawans because although Okinawa makes up less than 1% of Japan's land area, it contains over 70% of Japan's military presence. Which of course means that Okinawa could once again very well be devastated in the event of a conflict. From 1945 through 1972, Luchu was under direct US military rule which meant that it also missed out on the decades of economic growth that Japan experienced during the 50s and 60s. Luchuan strongly resisted being under U.S. military rule, so in 1972, the U.S. gave Luchu to Japan without a vote from Luchuans in a move that is very much illegal under international law. And today, Luchu remains under joint occupation by both the United States and Japan both of whom commit major human rights violations against indigenous Luchuans on a daily basis. The military takes up around 15% of Okinawa's land and around 30% of its arable or best lands, but contributes only around 5% to Okinawa's economy, running at a huge deficit. This is of course a tremendous economic burden on the Okinawan people, many of whom are forced to work two or three jobs just to get by. Okinawa maintains a very high child poverty rate at around 25%. The US military commits numerous crimes against Okinawan civilians, particularly violent crime against women and children. The United States military is also responsible for tremendous environmental destruction in Okinawa, including the current construction of another U.S. military base in the northern part of Okinawa at a location called Hinoko. The base's construction is destroying an ancient coral reef home to hundreds of rare and endangered species, including the Okinawa dugong. In February 2019, the Okinawan people held a referendum in which the overwhelming majority voted against the construction of this base, and yet both the United States and Japan governments simply ignored the referendum and are continuing to build the base anyway. To make matters worse, the U.S. military has also poisoned Okinawa's water with cancer-causing chemicals forcing thousands of Okinawans to buy bottled water. The U.S. and Japan governments claim that this heavy military presence is necessary in order to protect Okinawans from China. 
However, very few people believe that, and even the U.S. government has privately admitted that Okinawans do not see China as a threat. We know this via WikiLeaks, and it was published in the Wall Street Journal. I've done several videos in the past talking about Okinawa's relationship with China. Please check those out if you are interested in learning more. I will, however, say that China and Okinawa have always had very positive, friendly, and mutually beneficial relations. This dates back even to ancient times. China has never once harmed Okinawa or Luchu in any way, and actually China has helped Luchu in many ways. Whereas Japan tries to rewrite history and tries to cover up Luchu's glorious past as an independent nation, China has rightfully acknowledged Luchu's history, and even recently at the United Nations, China played an instrumental role in helping pass a resolution that is being referred to as the Legacies of Colonialism. This resolution is very important and is being applauded by Luchuans and other oppressed peoples around the world who have experienced the harmful impact of Western imperialism. So no, China is not a threat to Luchu, Hawaii, Guam, or any other nation in the Pacific. Rather, China offers an opportunity at multipolarity, an opportunity to expand our business, trade, and cross-cultural relations in mutually beneficial ways. This is what I and many others believe we should be doing not only with China, but with many other nations around the world. This is how we can build a more peaceful and prosperous society for us 